From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Andrea Lutz, Billings firefighters are revealing what they did during a recent rescue at a sugar silo. I'm Brandon Warren, and coming up, we'll have more on the alcohol licensing at Metro Park. But first, this is a live look from the Stockman Bank weather camera as rain and severe storms gear up to move across eastern Montana tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on your Tuesday. I'm Janelle Slade. Well, spring storms in Montana. We're going to head straight to the Q2 Weather Center, where Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh is tracking the storms and has the very latest. Ed. So far, we've been rather lucky around the Billings area, Janelle. You can watch these storms starting to roll off the mountains and then lose some of their energies. They get to Billings, so we've got the rain showers around right now. But across much of the region, we're already starting to see some strong to severe weather. Check out this area around Glendive. We're up to inch and a half hail has already been reported. And then another system here right around the Jordan area to the north, both of those one inch to up to two inch hail possible wind gusts hitting 40, 50 miles an hour. Certainly you can see some stronger winds here in the next short while as well. As that storm system continues to leave the Billings area, it could gain some energy and continue to push up into northeastern Montana. That's the areas where we could see the best possibilities for heavy rain, hail and damaging winds. More coming up in a little bit. All right, thanks so much, Ed. Well, in other news, Billings police responded to a report of a suicide late Sunday night, but Tonight, detectives are investigating the incident as a suspicious death. Now, the situation began Sunday, right before midnight. Officers were dispatched to a room at the Lazy KT Motel on First Avenue North. When arriving on scene, officers found 25-year-old Varian Bryan of Crow Agency dead from an apparent gunshot wound. However, according to a press release out today, investigators also discovered suspicious circumstances surrounding his death. So far, no arrests have been made and police are not currently looking for anyone. Well, a change in the sale of alcohol is now in place at Metro Park. Two entities will now split the duties of serving alcohol at concerts and other events. Q2's Brandon Warren has the details. After receiving proposals from multiple groups, county commissioners met to determine who would get the license to serve alcohol at Metro Park. We ended up splitting it up. So we have Anderson Management Group doing the alcohol, and they are going to be able to sell beer. So the Breakfast Exchange Club can only sell beer and wine. Anderson Management Group can sell all of it. And so that'll be a real advantage to people that come to Metro Park. In a press release Tuesday, Metro Park Assistant General Manager Tim Goodrich said they're happy to welcome back the Breakfast Exchange Club and excited to begin a relationship with Anderson Management. MTN News has reached out to Anderson for further comment, but we have not heard back as of Tuesday evening. The Breakfast Exchange Club, who has been the sole holder of the licensing for the last 45 years, is upset by the decision. We're relieved. We're also, we're a little bit disappointed. Um, we didn't, we have a smaller piece of the pie, which um, just goes back to the community. The Breakfast Exchange Club is a nonprofit and says that splitting the license will greatly affect the grants that they're able to give. But in the end, splitting the license was better for the county. The Breakfast Exchange Club proposal actually said that they would give the county 38% or Metro Park 38% of the proceeds. The private company, Anderson Management Group, actually said they would give 40%. Jones says they use the money given back to continue operations at Metro Park. In Billings, Brandon Warren, MTN News. And that next big concert event is scheduled for the end of the month when Foreigner plays at First Interstate Arena. Well, the Montana woman nominated by President Joe Biden to head the U.S. Bureau of Land Management had her confirmation hearing this morning before a Senate committee. And that hearing for Tracy Stone Manning was not without some partisan fireworks and tough questions from committee Republicans. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison has that story. Right from the start of Stone Manning's hearing before the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee, Republican senators didn't hold back. Here's Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. The Bureau of Land Management needs a director who believes in and is committed to upholding the agency's multiple use mandate. Based on her record, I'm concerned that Ms. Stone Manning does not fill the bill. Perhaps most troubling is Ms. Stone, Manning, Ms. Stone Manning's unvarnished political partisanship. Stone Manning has worked for the National Wildlife Federation in Missoula since 2017. But before that, she was chief of staff for Democratic Governor Steve Bullock 
and part of his cabinet as director of the State Department of Environmental Quality. She also served as state director for Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester, who introduced her at the hearing Tuesday and answered Barrasso's remarks. And she is somebody that believes in multiple use and appropriate use. And I will tell you this, I would not be here today introducing her if I thought she was the person that you described. Montana's other U.S. Senator, Republican Steve Daines, directed several pointed questions at Stone Manning about her positions on resource development, including opposition to a long-proposed copper and silver mine near Libby in northwest Montana. In 2015, you authored an article that called the Rock Creek Mine philosophically abhorrent, to quote yourself. Rock Creek Mine would create 300 full-time jobs and bring in $175 million in tax revenues. My question is, is it still your position that Rock Creek Mine and similar mining projects are, quote, philosophically abhorrent? Stone Manning didn't answer directly, but had this to say. I hope that you would look to my track record as director of the Department of Environmental Quality in my ability to work closely with industrial applicants and be fair and be transparent and to make sure that um, any development uh, is able to follow the law. If confirmed, she'd be the first confirmed director for BLM in more than four years. Former President Trump had a series of acting BLM directors that were never confirmed including one that a judge ordered removed in response to a lawsuit from then Montana Governor Bullock. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thanks, Mike. Now the BLM oversees 245 million acres of federal lands, mostly in the West, and millions of acres of federal mineral rights. The Senate committee took no immediate action on Stone Manning's confirmation today. Well, OSHA is now in the midst of an active investigation after a recent incident at Western Sugar. It buried a man to his chest in a sugar silo. And tonight, we're getting a first-hand account from rescuers about the critical steps they took to save the man's life. As Q2's Andrea Lutz reports, firefighters say success is comprised of a lot of training and some woodworking. Billings firefighters are reflecting on a recent rescue at Western Sugar, where a man was trapped in a sugar silo. Now, they respond to a lot of rescues around the city that are all different, but this one was something they never anticipated. Each time our Billings fire crews leave for a call, the unknown awaits. There's that moment when you're in there and you realize that you are that person's only lifeline. Lives are on the line. It looked like a daunting task. And nerves must remain calm. We train for those type of situations, out of the box things. And build for them too. This trailer is specifically for um, collapse and confined spaces, so it's got a stockpile of lumber and construction. It would be what you would normally see in a construction trailer throughout town. Billings firefighters tow along this construction trailer, ready for whatever puzzle needs to be solved. So if these companies are putting in water lines or utility lines when they have a collapse in there, we use these big boards here to shore up those sides. In late May, when the call came in that a man was buried to his chest in sugar at a silo here at Western Sugar, the Billings Fire Rescue Tech Team was activated. It was a pretty dangerous uh, situation for collapse. Inside the silo, a problem-solving mission. So the sugar was hardened on the walls and had created a uh, danger of more collapse on top of them. And so we created a uh, halo of safety, I guess is the way to describe it, that we built out of plywood. So it, it was a little bit it looked like a daunting task because every time you dig the sugar, it, you know, it was pretty granulated down at the ground. More would just kind of go in around him. Gabe Hernandez was brought inside the silo because of his size. We worked on him for about two hours and it was two pretty frustrating hours because you couldn't move too fast there. Um, vibrations could get the, the kind of walls of sugar that were about five to six feet above him potentially to come back, come down on top of him. Billings is quite an anomaly when it comes to technical rescues. The rims, the industrial district, and the river. Therefore, firefighters say they train for it all. Maybe once in a career thing for those guys to go into that bin of sugar, right? Yeah. But they were ready for it. I think that I probably heard a, a actual sigh of relief from the crews inside the silo. Just getting them out of that sugar was, was a huge, huge sigh of relief from everybody. They're ready to build so they can be ready to save. In Billings, Andrea Lutz, MTN News.
Thanks, Andrea. And OSHA officials also tell Andrea because this is an open case, they will not provide any further details on how the man got buried. We're told the victim was released that night from the hospital. Well, up next on tonight's MTN 530 News right here on Q2, the Treasure State could seem, soon be seeing a bit more green as we inch closer to approving recreational cannabis. Hi, everybody. Scott Breen at MSU Billings with the Yellow Jackets interviewing their second of three finalists for the hotly contested athletic director job straight ahead in sports. We'll hear from him.